As a continuation to our previous series, um, we had previously just specified the reactor types of the R storage and the RCSDR, right? Now we had also specified that you need an exit stream, which is now which I have now predefined as product one and uh, production here. Right now, we need to also define now what the reactors are. Right now, as I said earlier, on the reactors, the R storage reactor is essentially non-predictive. It is used when your kinetics are unknown, but you have an you have a knowledge of the conversions and the stoichiometry uh, reactions, right? And it's typically used when the reaction is fast and irreversible. Right now, we just need to specify the conditions that this reaction is happening. Now, if you recall, I was I'm trying to or we are investigating the so critical about the production process, right? That is catalyst free, right? Now, in the publication that I had written previously, um, which I will encourage you, I think I'll leave the link below. The catalyst free biodiesel production um, process, we had explored the kinetics and the stoichiometry of such a process. Now, you will see that here, yeah, um, subcritical trans encryption reactions occur at um, 28 degrees Celsius, 28 megapa. Sorry, 280 degrees Celsius and 28 megapa. Of course, the methanol to tag molar ratio of 42 needs to be maintained to have an almost complete um, conversion um, process, right? So that the rate's constant, um, the rate of the reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of the of the starting uh, uh, triolin, right? Okay. So we're going to specify these conditions in our our stretch model. So we just specify it as 280 degrees, 28 mega par, right? We also specify the reactions. You click on the new reaction. This is triolene reacting with methanol to produce fatty acid methyl ester and the glycerol, right? Now the stoichiometry of this is one to three. Again, we know what the reactions are. Three to one. Okay, we assume that the conversion is about 90% with the limit based on the limiting reactor. See, the icon quickly changes to blue. Now, you will recall here, okay, that you see the stoichiometry is known, right? And we know the conditions, right? And we have an assumed conversion of 90% for the triolene. For the tri 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 which gives us a complete modeling of the Arsh storage reactor, right? Now you come to this left hand side, you see that the R1 reactor 1 is completely um, completed, like it's finished. So we need to deal with reactor 2. Now reactor 2 is the Arsh storage reactor which requires you to have uh, a reaction happening, okay? Now we just specify the same conditions that we have specified before, so mega part, 28 mega part, 180 degrees Celsius, right? We say it's a vapor liquid, the reaction is happening in both phases, and we can specify, we can leave the residence time as one hour, just for simplicity, right? Because this residence time typically is, is actually um, obtained experimentally, right? But for our case, we can just leave it as an R just to move on because uh, just to um, get on with the work, right? Um, now, having done that, you need to specify the kinetics, right? Now, the kinetics need to um, are based on the reaction that you need to define. So, you go back down, you see the reaction here, you need to define the reactions that are happening in the same way triolene, reacting with methanol. To produce the fames, the fatty acid metal esters, and the glycerol. The same thing we just did. So one, three, um, three, one. So you come back to the paper. You see that. You see that. As I said, it's a first order based on the power law. It's a first order kinetic uh, process, a kinetic law. A kinetic law is a first order kinetic reaction, right? Such that the only component here. Right, the rate is approximately uh, 
and proportional to the to the concentration of the trialing. So in other words, the concentration of the trialing raised to power of one, right? Where other components in the reactor in the, in the reacting species are more or less raised to the power of zero. And of course, it's not we are saying it's it's fast and irreversible. So again, the the, the products are also raised to the power of zero. Hence, they are not visible in this um, system. So you come here and you specify the components, the exponents as one, and specify the other exponents as zero, right? And yes, you are done, right? So you come back here, you now need to specify what the kinetics are. Now all you need to make sure here is to make sure that the units are consistent, right? We are using molarity as a concentration basis, right? And in this case, the pre-exponential factor is 141796 with a unit of seconds raised to the power minus 1, right? So this is the SI unit, uh, so we need to make sure everything now is in the appropriate unit. Now the next thing we see is that the activation energy is 56,000 kilojoules per kilomole. So you come here, you put 56,000 kilojoules per kilomole. Um, appropriate units, right? Of course, we do not know the initial temperature, right? We assume that is unknown, um, but f um, you know, the reference temperature, um, which is really not relevant since we are using this kinetic um, um, relationship, right? So we have defined everything we need to define. We go back to the R storage setup. We now specify that this is the selected reaction, the, rea the selected reaction. And you see here that the required input is now complete. So what do you do? Typically, I like to reinitialize the simulation, right? Then click on the run icon and wait for the simulation um, to be complete. Now we see that there are errors generated. So we need to go find out why there are errors generated, right? So we go to the control panel. Now, they said it's not in mass balance. As Ben tells us, it's not in mass balance. Okay, now there was a major error that we made while we were doing this. Now, you recall that we had to maintain the methanol to the to methanol to, to um, the, the trialing ratio of 42 to 1, molar ratio. So, this actually should be 42 right then you reinitialize again and run your simulation and see if this solves the problem okay now you see it has properly converged with no warnings and no errors